So, Lauren, do you remember who the first Super User Award winner was? Well, of course, it was the CERN team. It's hard to believe it's been two years since they won it in Paris. Wow, okay. So I think that's Tim Bell. I've been kind of <laughs> talking about him lately. But, uh, you know, you could say, I guess, that uh, OpenStack's synonymous with science, and science and OpenStack go together? Well, of course. So OpenStack was founded by Rackspace and NASA. So you could say that scientific research is really part of the DNA of the community. Amazing. Well, without further ado, I will introduce you to Tim Bell from CERN to tell us what they're up to these days. Thanks, Mark. Hello, and thank you for the chance to come along and give you an update on where we are with OpenStack at CERN. So if you were driving between Geneva and the Jura Mountains, you might go past this strange uh, globe. This is the CERN conference center. But behind it are the Atlas Experiment Control Buildings. So these are the surface buildings that are 100 meters above the largest machine on Earth. This is the Large Hadron Collider, 27 kilometers around, four experiments, and we fire around beams of protons in opposite directions and then collide them at the experiments. The experiments, so there are four. This one is CMS. Um, it stands for Compact Muon Solenoid. Um, it's a bit of a strange term given that it weighs 14,000 tons to call it compact. So when we fire these beams of protons round, what do we get? We get around 1 billion collisions every second. So each beam has bunches around 100 billion protons. They pass through each other at the experiments. And then out of that, we then get simultaneous collisions occurring inside the experiments. And this is one of the things that's driving the computing needs, which is that we have to be able to handle all those collisions and then separate them out into separate, different, and distinct collisions. But CERN isn't just the Large Hadron Collider. Um, I have the, the honor of having an antimatter factory just down the road from my office. <laughs> and there, what we do is we take antiprotons, positrons, anti-electrons, and slow them down, put them into orbit around each other, and create anti-hydrogen. This allows us to study items like, uh, does antimatter go up or down under gravity? We host at CERN also the control center for the AMS experiment, which is actually on the outside of the International Space Station, looking at the solar winds and particles from space without the problems of them having to come through the atmosphere. 2016 has been a, a great year for the LHC. Um, we've had extremely good performance. The beam has been very successful in staying in for extended periods of time, which leads to more collisions. We've got about half a petabyte a day coming in at the moment. Um, and with this, we're accumulating more. Um, currently, the data store is about 160 petabytes in total. But looking out, when we have a look at how we're going to be distracting these collisions from each other, then we're looking at about 60 times larger compute capacity required by 2023. Moore's law will only get us about a factor five less than that, even if we manage to keep that going. So how are we looking to address this need for scalability? So we started production with OpenStack in 2013. In 2014, in Paris, uh, we had 70,000 cores. We're now 190,000, which is roughly 90% of the compute capacity at CERN running on top of OpenStack. We do migration of long-running service VMs. We're doing around 5,000 this year. And we're currently looking in process place the process to get around another 100,000 in the next six months. So with this, we have to have a platform that is scalable and that allows us to grow. But at the same time, the users are looking for more functionality, not just more capacity. So we've been looking at containers. The users have been very enthusiastic about reworking their applications for microservices. We've also had a number of collaborations with Rackspace and with the European Union Indigo Data Clouds to try and work out how best to apply containers to science. We've used the OpenStack Magnum project. This is attractive for us because we can use the existing OpenStack infrastructure, our security arrangements, our capacity planning, our accounting, and just add Magnum as an additional functionality rather than having to do the same thing with Mesos, OnePlace, Kubernetes, and other technologies. 
But at the same time, we have to look at how can we grow. And we've been looking at public clouds here. Um, for a couple of years, we've been running the Large Hadron Collider workloads on public clouds. We tried around 10 in total. The vast majority of these are open stack based. And what this allows us to do is to take the in-house tooling that we've been using for the on-premise cloud and use the same tooling for running on the public clouds. So thank you very much for all of your help. With communities like this, working groups like the scientific working group and the large deployment teams, we're going to be able to take on the computing challenges of CERN's experiments going forward. Thank you.